Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed of Somalia on his country's Independence Day. His Majesty the King wished President Mohammed abundant good health and happiness as well as further security, stability and prosperity to the brotherly Somali people. The Representative Council Speaker Ahmed bin Salman Al Musallam affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain's democratic momentum is moving forward towards further achievements led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Speaker highlighted the synergy between sincere national will and wide political and legislative participation based on the principles and outcome enshrined in the National Action Charter and the Constitution of the Kingdom of Bahrain. He praised the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the efforts to achieve the royal visions and keenness on constructive cooperation between legislative and executive branches of the government. The Speaker made the statement as the Kingdom of Bahrain joins the other nations in marking the International Day of Parliamentarism annually observed on June the 30th. Al Musallam highlighted Bahrain's steady democratic progress which earned the Kingdom international recognition and praise as a model for parliamentary work. He noted Bahrain's success in hosting the 146th Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union and the meeting of the Committee on Economic Affairs and Sustainable Development of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, which represented regional and international vote of confidence. He pinned hopes on parliamentary diplomacy to contribute to promoting the values and principles of tolerance and peaceful coexistence, supporting popular participation in legislative institutions, and opening broader horizons of cooperation in development fields, especially economic and investment. The Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the International Day of Parliamentarism, annually observed on June the 30th. Al Saleh stressed Bahrain's landmark achievements and the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, highlighting royal support to the legislative branch of the government since the inception of the democratic process, which paved the way for the establishment of a modern constitutional monarchy in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Shura Chairman also congratulated His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailing Bahrain's remarkable achievements in light of the development strides led by His Majesty the King. In a statement, he highlighted the constructive cooperation of the government, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, stressing cooperation between the legislative and executive branches of the government. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world today in celebrating the International Day of Parliamentarism, which falls on the 30th of June, with the slogan of this year being Parliaments for the Planet. The legislative authority in the Kingdom of Bahrain plays a prominent role in supporting all international and regional decisions in various fields, including its continuous follow-up of the initiatives taken by the parliaments of the world to achieve the goals of sustainable development. The work of the legislative authority in Bahrain over the past years has formed an essential part of the comprehensive development project led by His Majesty the King. As Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy has reflected with great success the achievements made by the Kingdom in various fields. In this regard, the Kingdom of Bahrain has supported all efforts that enhance the protection of the environment, as well as the preservation and sustainability of biodiversity and the development of policies and programs pursued by the government in this context. The Kingdom of Bahrain established many institutions, government agencies and committees interested in developing programs, policies and strategies aimed at achieving sustainability in various fields. The legislative authority in the Kingdom has also been keen to enact a number of laws and regulations related to sustainable development. Bahrain's two-month ban on outdoor work during the afternoon will begin on Saturday the 1st of July. The ban on work under direct sunlight and in open places will run from midday until 4 p.m. The aim is to protect the workers and ensure their safety from heat stress, sunstroke and various summer diseases, and to reduce the occupational accidents during the hottest months of the year. On the occasion, the Labour Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Humaydan stressed the importance of applying the principles and requirements of occupational safety in order to ensure a safe, accident-free and productive work environment. He indicated that the Labour Ministry's specialized teams will carry out 
field visits and inspection campaigns to ensure full compliance with the provisions of Edict 3 for the year 2013 on banning work in open areas in July and August. The minister called on employers to continue their annual commitment to implementing the edict in order to preserve the safety and health of workers and to take all the organizational measures, including the rescheduling of working hours in a way that does not affect the progress of their work, highlighting the humanitarian and economic dimensions of the edict. Article 192 of Law 36 for the year 2012, promulgating the law of labor in the private sector, stipulating that a jail term not exceeding three months and a fine of 500 to 1,000 shall be the penalty inflicted on violators. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture has announced the launch of the first edition of the Almond Festival from the 8th to the 15th of July held at the Farmer's Market in the Bodaya Botanical Garden. The Almond Festival is similar to the Farmer's Market and target citizens, residents, and GCC countries' visitors. The first Almond Festival will be a platform to support the Bahraini workers in marketing their produce, in addition to introducing the almond tree as part of a heritage, encouraging agricultural activities and raising the awareness on the importance of agriculture and the need to preserve Bahraini fruits. The first Almond Festival witnesses the participation of 15 farmers three projects and productive families. It will continue for two weeks and shall witness various activities that will include displaying almond seedlings, displaying almond varieties and planting 1,000 almond seedlings by the ministry. <laughs> The Hajj pilgrims began the ritual of stoning in Mina with the start of the second day of Tashriq and heading to the Grand Mosque in Mecca to perform Tawaf al-Wada, the farewell circumambulation, which is the last ritual of Hajj. Saudi authorities have allocated multiple paths for the crowds to ensure a smooth movement for the pilgrims. The General Presidency for the Two Holy Mosques Affairs has announced the initiation of the second operational plan to receive, arrange and move pilgrims to the Grand Mosque to perform the farewell circumambulation with ease, in coordination with all service and security sectors of Hajj. Every Muslim is obligated to perform Hajj once in a lifetime if they are physically and financially able to do so. This year, around 2 million Muslims from all over the world travel to the holy city of Mecca for the sacred pilgrimage, which is one of the five pillars of Islam. Saudi security forces from all sectors operating during the Hajj season make great efforts to serve the pilgrims and visitors of the Holy Kaaba. The security of the Grand Mosque and the Holy Sites are making great efforts to maintain security and help the needy and the elderly, as well as guiding them and facilitating their movement. The Hajj security forces prepared an integrated security plan based on three main axes. The security axis, the organizational axis, and the humanitarian axis. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ The rulers of the United Arab Emirates have pardoned more than 2,000 prisoners ahead of Eid al-Adha. The UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, ordered the release of almost 1,000 prisoners ahead of the holy celebration. The President's Barton aligns with the UAE's humanitarian initiatives based on the values of forgiveness and tolerance. The ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, released 650 prisoners of different nationalities from Dubai's prisons. Sheikh Mohammed's order comes as part of his keenness to bring happiness to the families of the prisoners and give them an opportunity to start a new life. The rulers of Fujairah, Ras al Khaimah, Ajman, and Umm al Qayyim also ordered similar pardons. The King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, KS Relief, continued to distribute sacrificial meat to the poor across Yemen, Somalia, and Sudan on the occasion of Eid al Adha. In Yemen, the center distributed 291 caucuses in Hadramaut Governorate and 200 in Ma'rib Governorate. As part of the KS relief, 
Adahi project in Yemen for Eid al-Adha of 2023, which aims to distribute sacrificial meat to the displaced needy and people with special needs in Yemen. In Somalia, KS Relief also inaugurated Adahi project for distributing sacrificial meat in cooperation with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. And in Sudan, more than 1,500 food packages were distributed, benefiting more than 7,300 people. Hapta markets across the Sultanate of Oman are witnessing good businesses during Eid al-Adha celebrations. These markets have come up on open spaces or under the shade of palm, mango and calf trees or near castles and forts. Several such markets have come up in the wilayats of Wadi Bani Khalid and Ibra in North Sharqiya, the wilayat of Bawshir in Musqat, Fanja in the wilayat of Bidbid in Dakhliya. The markets are visited by adults and children, women and men from all walks of life, during which the needs and supplies of the Eid feast are presented. Buying and selling in its traditional ways give these markets a uniqueness in contrast. Happy children constitute another feature as they roam with their families among toys, sweets and food items. The Eid celebrations continue in various governorates according to a schedule that provides more opportunity for sellers and buyers to achieve their goals from this market.